Hey guys, what's up? This is Luke with Think Boxley coming at you today with kind of a different video from what I normally do. This isn't any kind of review or anything like that. Um, this is going to be strictly for YouTube. I'm not going to write a post about this. Um, but I'll explain a few things to make sure that you can do this yourself if you are interested. So what I have right here is Mass Effect Infiltrator, which is the tie-in game for Mass Effect 3, uh, produced by EA uh, for Android devices. Uh, running on my Sony Xperia Z. Now if you have this device or any number of other Android devices you might check out this app on the uh, Google Play Store and find that it's listed as incompatible with your device. Um, in fact on some devices it just isn't going to show up. If you visit the Play Store on your device itself it's going to show up as it, it's just not going to show up. Uh, if you visit it on your desktop then it will just say it's incompatible with your device or some of your devices. Now it, it is a lot of times possible to run the game on them anyway it's just that they haven't been tested and because of the way the game is programmed then it has to download different source files for um, different kinds of devices, different CPUs and things like that. So there's a lot of variables that go into it on EA's side and and their solution to it was not to program the game better, but rather just to um, block anybody that they haven't tested from using the game. Now it turns out it is possible to use the game, not cracked or hacked or anything like that. You can use the original files, it's totally legal, um, without having to go uh, get it through the store directly. So I'm just going to show you here even Galaxy at War, which is the online aspect of the game. Even this works, so you know it's legitimate. It's not any sort of pirated software or anything like that. You can see I'm not doing too bad right now. 81% galactic readiness overall. I've got up to, I think, 85% and down to 79% in some places. And one of three Cerberus escapees, so you know I've actually already completed the game once on my Nexus 7. And speaking of which, that is actually something that's very important to this. If you're going to do this with this specific app or with another game that maybe is showing up as not compatible with your device, but you'd like to try it anyway. Uh, you have to have a second device that is compatible with the game, first of all. And uh, the last update for this game in particular made it compatible with the Nexus 7. So I bought it and downloaded it and installed it on this guy over here. Now right now I don't have the game open, I have ES File Explorer open because that's the first app that you're going to need. Any kind of file explorer uh, will we'll do this probably, I guess. There, there are a few unique features about this that may be exclusive to this particular uh, file explorer. Certainly it's free and one of the best ones, so I'd recommend you use this anyway. ES File Explorer, again, is the name for that one. You can find that on the Google Play Store. What you're going to want to do if you're going to try to install a game like this, side load a game like this, um, is you're going to open up your ES File Explorer, go to Tools, at the top you'll see this App Manager. Tap on that and you'll see all of your installed apps. So I'm just going to go through and find the app that I want to side load, in this case it's Mass Effect Infiltrator, and you'll see down there the text is already highlighted in green because I've backed it up already, um, but what you're going to want to do is just long press on the app, and once you've got it selected, down at the bottom of the screen you'll see this backup icon. Just hit that um, I've already backed it up, so it may or may not do this for me. It doesn't take that long. Uh, it said it was at, uh, backed up successfully, so maybe it did a second copy, I don't know. But anyway, once that's done, you're just going to hit local and go back to your home. And now you will see there is this backups folder. Inside the backups folder is an apps folder. And inside the apps folder is your application. And basically what the backup did was just took all those little files that get installed to your Android device and repackaged them into an APK, which um, a lot of you Android fanatics out there will know is basically like the EXE on Windows or the DMG of Apple. It's the executable file type. And I know DMG is, is actually a different kind of file on Apple, but uh, you get the idea. So once you have this APK, there's a few things you can do with it. Basically, you just want to get it on your other device. You can do that however you like. You can copy it to your PC and then copy it to your other device if you want. Uh, but there's a lot of other options you can do actually right inside ES File Explorer. If you just hold on that and select it, then down at the bottom you hit More. And then there is a Share button here, which you can use with a number of installed apps. You can share it directly through Bluetooth with Dropbox or Copy, which, by the way, I highly recommend. And I have a link for that. You can get 5 gigs free if you visit my link on thinkboxy.com and look up the Copy review. And uh, you can also use Gmail, which is what I actually did. I just shared it with, as an attachment through Gmail so I could open up the message on my other device and download it that way. But like I said, there's plenty of different options here that you can do to transfer the APK to your device. And once you do that, you can install it 
from another file manager. You shouldn't have to be rooted for this, but both devices are rooted, um, just to let you know about that. So there is a chance that maybe some of this involves rooting. I don't think it does, though. Um, just be aware about that. Um, and once you've got the application side loaded, it may work already or it may not. Depends on the game. In this case, it did not work already because you have to download the actual game data files off of the internet. And EA's servers did not recognize my Xperia Z, since it is an unsupported device after all. So I had to do another step here. I had to go back to um, my Nexus 7. And inside your Nexus 7 or whatever other device you're using, you will find this folder called Android. So you're just going to open that up, and inside that is going to be a folder called Data. And inside here is going to be a bunch of different folders, depending on how many apps you have installed. And this is basically just where all of the app data goes. So you're just going to have to find it. It shouldn't be too difficult to find. In this case, com.ea.games.meinfiltrator uh, underscore NA, which would be for North America. So I'm just going to hit that. And inside you can see there's all of these files. Uh, probably the easiest way for this would definitely be to connect it to a PC, uh, just because there are so many files here. Uh, definitely the best way would be to connect your data cable, your USB cable, and drop all these onto your PC, then plug in your other device and drop them onto the device in the exact same folder. You have to make sure the folder scheme is the same. Um, and one thing that did come up with this um, is that since the Nexus 7 is running a Tegra 3 CPU and the Xperia Z is running a Snapdragon S4 Pro, um, the game graphics displayed, but there were all kinds of issues. The shading was there, but uh, there were no textures, the lighting was off, and all kinds of problems like that. So in order to fix that, I actually couldn't use the Nexus 7 files. I actually had to go online, and I had to find um, the files that were used for a Samsung Galaxy S3, because the processor is similar enough that those files would work. So I kind of had to merge a couple different installations to get this to work. Um, but in no way is that illegal because these were not executable files. You could not play the game from them. It was just texture data and things like that. So it's totally harmless. Um, and certainly since you, if you, I'm assuming you have paid for the, for the game anyway. I certainly have. Uh, so as long as you own the game, it, it is in no way illegal for you to get the game data necessary to run it on your device. So once you've gotten all that copied and transferred and you've gotten all the files that are compatible that you need dropped in there. And by the way, if you need to do that, it's in published. And you see these folders. The ones that I had to transfer were textures, textures uncompressed, particle-based textures, and particles. The rest should work fine uh, for whatever device. It's pretty device agnostic. But those textures and things can sometimes be kind of device specific so you might need to merge from a few different installations there and depending on your situation you may be using a Samsung tablet or something already in or a Samsung phone and you don't have to uh, go through that but that was in my case transferring from a Nexus 7 to a device with a very different uh, CPU so well, now that I've explained that we're just gonna go through here and we're gonna hit play and I'll just hit resume here just so that you can see that this works so it is loading. Lockdown initiated. So I've already played a little ways through here. I did have a little problem with some crashes partway through, and I had to change the screen resolution by editing one file, but that was very simple. Uh, as you can see here, it runs really, really smooth on the device. So there's absolutely no reason why it should be uh, incompatible. It's just a matter of testing, but it runs really, really smooth. It's far smoother than on my Nexus 7. You're getting destroyed from somewhere. Throw him out of the way. And I'll probably call that pretty good here. You get the idea. You see that it works. It runs terrifically. It's very smooth. Online works. Um, it crashes every once in a while, but in this case, the game does that on every device. The Nexus 7 freezes every once in a while, too. Um, so it's certainly nothing unusual there. 
Anyway, this has been Luke with ThinkBoxley.com, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and be sure to stay tuned for more great tech thoughts and news and reviews on ThinkBoxley.